Namaskar. Hello and welcome to P Guru's channel. This is your host Sri Ayer. Today is, as always, an Ask Abhijit night. We apologize for the few minutes in delay. Uh, we had to start a little bit late because Abhijit had a few other commitments. But we have now Abhijit Ayer Mitra. Abhijit, hello and welcome to P Guru's channel. This is episode 31 of Ask Abhijit. How are you, sir? Vail, Vail, Vetri Vail, and thanks for having me on as usual. Vetri Vail, Veera Vail, and people are chomping at the bit and they want to know when you're going to eat your shirt because Tatas have indeed purchased Air India. So they want to know when. So what is the uh, timetable, uh, Abhijit? So uh, I think the formal handover is on the 21st of December. Uh, the when the formal signing over happens, it will be a P Guru's exclusive. I will be eating my shirt on live, uh, well, uh, yeah, live chat uh, like this. Yeah, <laughs> on live show, I will eat my shirt. On, it will be a P Guru's exclusive. Please record okay. it and you can keep it for posterity. And you know what? I'm very happy I'll be eating my shirt. As disgusting <laughs> as it is going to be to eat something as inedible as cotton. Hmm. I'm just happy for the country. You know, I'm happy for <laughs> everybody that's going to benefit from this. I'm happy for all the MEA babus who are not going to get their upgrades. All the worthless little lumps of IFS and IAS shit that are not going to keep get and their servants and their servants' children and whatnot who are not going to get bumped up to business <laughs> and class. Their and, their <laughs> and their dog. And their dog. Not that the dog doesn't deserve it, but... <laughs> I think the dogs right. deserve it more than their families do, but anyway. Hmm. <laughs> yes, yes, yes. So, um, Abhijit, as you know, uh, I'm in a slightly different setting today. I'm going to read the questions from here. They will appear there, I think. Let's start with the first one. Can we have the first question, please? Here we go. Um, does Adrian, Adrian Levy or Adrian Levy make genuine claims? Or is he another of those pro propagandists? Have, having a hard time reading the book Spy Stories by him. What are your opinions mm. about him? Look, um, I've started reading that book and I have found, again, I should emphasize what I have been told by my sources varies quite considerably by in some of the things that he's writing. Right now, the problem with source based stories is it's almost impossible to confirm. Uh, could somebody be spinning? I don't think Adrian Levy himself would make it up because he, he has pretty good sources. The issue is, are the sources spinning him? Um, and I think in many cases, uh, you could make a case that either he is being spun or somebody else is being spun or whatever. So it's still jury's out. So I get it. Next yeah. one from yeah. Aditya B again. Why is it that leftists the world over are so illogical and why are they the ones in the woke spectrum? What is the underlying philosophy? Uh, that's not entirely true. Some leftists are the smartest people around. They're very cold and calculating. They'll do anything for power. Uh, in fact, even the people driving this entire woke renaissance are very smart people. They don't believe a word of what they write, but they've monetized it. Uh, and in fact, if you find that the strongest pushback uh, against uh, leftists, uh, against wokes, is coming from the left. If you look at those three people, James Lindsay, Helen Pluckrose and people who wrote that fake papers and submitted it to uh, peer-reviewed journals and made fools of almost every peer-reviewed journal, uh, they're leftists. They self-identify as leftists. So I think what you're seeing is there's a realignment happening wherein, you know, the internet has essentially become a tool of democratization of lynch mobs. And who are lynch mobs usually? Do, do you ever think the lord of the castle or anything went off on a lynch mob? No. It would be the ordinary people because they were pushed to do something because they're idiots. Who are the most woke people? They're usually third raters, inferiority complex people who haven't achieved th things in their life. Who, whose only sense of power comes from outraging and lynch mobs. So you, you're you actually seeing a realignment where if you actually follow these traditional leftists who do not like identity politics, they're actually aligning a lot more 
with the right retweeting each other quoting each other citing each other writing uh, in each other's publications than you would find with the wokes so it's actually left and right united against this vast center in between you know, you you made an excellent point and i'll add the, to to what your observ your observation abhijit that the politics the world over are being pushed towards these extremes and the moderate middle where they would have a certain ideology but they would sit down to talk across the table and come up with something that both sides can live with that is going down that's why that's why you're seeing for example uh, i'm amazed and stunned stunned is the only word i can put at the meteoric rise of lumpens like pramila jaypal and aoc and ilan omar you know pramila jaypal is a head of progressives now and ilan omar is the whip she is the whip and she is now waiting for, i don't know when the fbi is going to go and arrest her because there were two charges that they have determined one was that she did indeed marry her own blood brother the dna match was 99.9999999997% and the other was that she committed immigration fraud because that guy was actually living in uk so the immigration fraud has no time limit whereas the the other one the marriage thing has a statute of limitation that has run out but they have not and this lady is the whip the whip and she has they are controlling a hundred a hundred democrats out of a possible 216 or 217 it's just mind boggling abhijit i'm sorry to rant she she is the rubbish pier of the modern generation but you know what happened mm -hmm. to rubbish pier during the french revolution ultimately the guillotine came down on him <laughs> you remember what happened to senator mccarthy ultimately yes. he was reduced to uh, irrelevance the problem here is the institutional capture of the woke left is so severe i'm not too sure i think it's past the point of no return and we're seeing the end of america see the the, the thing that they have done i'm sorry we'll go to the next question but i just have to sh share with somebody who actually understands some of these underlying currents what these people did is the first 180 days they have actually physically lifted the borders and left it let let everybody and anybody in and then they knew that the border states will start pushing back so they started busing them around the whole country and everybody has now dispersed the point that they are trying to make is they are saying pramila's is a very safe democratic seat rokhana is another safe democratic seat ilan omar ditto aoc ditto they are saying that as long as so they are telling the rest of the crowd you may get washed away by a republican wave but you know what we are here to stay and we are going to make sure that we are getting even more powerful by bringing in and anchoring that's the only way i can put people who are their guaranteed vote bank it's a scary situation abhijit a very very scary situation like i said it's the end of america you know um, democracies aren't destroyed by outside they de they destroy themselves they, from within they collapse from inside yes. exactly that is what happened with germany germany first destroyed itself before hitler took it over right right, right. Uh, uh uh with uh, uh, the french republic it first destroyed itself from within and then you know napoleon comes and takes it over with uh, rome you look at republican rome it destroyed itself before julius caesar takes over and establishes a dictatorship mm -hmm. you look at uh, uh why look that far you look at the lichavi confederacy the whole story of amarapali and you know how bimbisara comes in and sows uh, discontent amongst the citizens of the lichavi confederacy that is the classic example of how democracies destroy themselves so america is it will not be china that destroyed america it will be america that destroyed america sad but that's true ashish sharma wants to know uh, as uh, abhijit hope you took my recommendation last week and watched quit games <coughs> yes how was it and do you think Loved south korean it. thank you I downloaded it the moment you uh, told me. Well, uh, after that uh, last week's P Gurus was over, I've still not finished. Um, I'm two episodes. I'm uh, second last episode. I've kind of quarter way finished, but I love it. It's so awesome. I think you know, uh, Kingdom and Squid Games are like such amazing serials. Like there's just such amazing shit coming out of Korea right now. 
So oh, thank you for the watched, recommendation, Ashish. Have you watched uh, Vincenzo? Uh, no. Who's it about? Uh, it's it about? about the <laughs> Italian mobster who goes back to South Korea to settle some old scores. Very, very good. Oh, I should watch it. Okay. Yeah. If, if, if you if you have ever listened to K-pop music, which is in my my opinion, Desi music set to English lyrics, but it is very popular in Korea. The tunes are very, very Desi. Very Desi. Okay. You know, ahak chicken, ahak chicken, ahak chicken, ahak chicken. That's that's the kind of stuff, you know. <laughs> and, I think uh, that was a uh, uh, the the particular tune you were using was that Dalair Mehendi tune. No, he's apparently yes, yes, driving yes. taxis in New York right now. No, something like that. <laughs> apparently, I know, so, I know. Yeah. meteoric rise and another you know short crash. Ashish Sharma wants to know why are South Koreans angry with the former Buddhist president Park Chung Hee, though he was responsible for the miracle on the Han River. And how much does religion play a role in South Korean politics? Religion does play a role in South Korean politics, but it's reducing because even Christians out there are increasingly slowly, very surely identifying as irreligious. Uh, so which is apparently a cause of concern for the church, which is why they bhadkao fai uh, kind of, but you know, unlike India, it is a country of laws and rules. So they follow that very, very, very uh, well. So, uh, you know, criminality and identity politics thrive in countries like India, where there is no rule of law and your police is a joke and your judiciary is a joke. In America, uh, in Korea, that's not the case. America is a joke. But uh, in Korea, that's not the case. So, you know, there's limits to what you can do. So there is rising irreligiousness. As for why they hate him, remember, gratitude is a very heavy burden to carry. They accept all the good that Pak Chung Hee did, but for them, their memories of all the nasty things he did are much, much more. It's like Japanese rule. You know, Korea's entire progress was under Japanese rule. The industrialization of the North, you know, the nor North Korea was industrialized much before the South was. Today, it's a deindustrialized country. Till 1979, it had the second highest per capita income in Asia after Japan. All of it had to do with the human value addition that the Japanese had done introducing the Japanese education system. First world for the in those days, first world education system, heavy machinery, heavy industries, because uh, all the extraction from Manchuria and Siberia where all the minerals were taken out and the production was done in uh, 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 northern Korea. So, you know, th there was a lot of that happening. But you look at Japan, it's universally viewed as negative, even though on net it was positive. It's like the way we view the Brits. My general opinion of the Brits is they did far more good than they did bad. Uh, but most people seem to agree with Shashi Tharoor that it was some uh, unending nightmare. But then remember, I come from a different, uh, this thing in Bengal, how bad Muslim rule was for us, the British were a liberation. They were genuinely a liberation. You know, there's a lot of folk tales about how horrible the Muslims were, Muslim rulers were and things like that. Real or false, I don't know, but that, that is how it was perceived. So there's, there's a lot. Gratitude, like I said, is a very heavy burden to carry. Next question, please. Aditya B again. You refer amazing books. List some fascinating books that you have read lately. Yeah, there's the history of weird, no, um, weird people. It's called weird people. I, um, um, I'll, um, tell you it's it's fascinating it's how j just check up weird people joseph henrich joseph henrich weird people uh, read all his books they're fascinating it's about how the western mind diverged from normal human thinking some 2000 2500 years back read it it's just it's amazing it will explain why the west has traditionally been way ahead of us almost continuously for the last 15000 years Amarchand wants to know, Abhijit sir, how capable is our SU-30 MKI compared to F-16 of Park and SU-35 of China? Is it better than them? Iffy. Um, F-16, um, you know, uh, 
I would still, when the chips are down, I'll give the battle to the F-16. See, our, our Sukhoi has a lot of integration problems. Uh, the Chinese Sukhoi is almost entirely Chinese. So the Chinese Chinese Sukhois, as in made in China Sukhois, I think our, our Sukhois would be able to shoot them down like uh, ducks. Uh, the Russian supplied Sukhois will be a tougher game to shoot down because the Russians do ensure that our planes are somewhat superior. But, you know, they can't account for all the foreign equipment in it, the Israeli jammers, the French electronics and things like that. So that could be iffy. F-16s, I, uh, you know, there's a reason in Balakot we used Mirage 2000s and not the Sukhoi. That's a very important point. Yes. Z Applestuff Z wants to know, what do you think about the design of Color Me Pink album covers? Personally, I loved it. Thank you. Yes, I loved it too. So this Twitter handle called Kanda Batata, uh, he made it for me. Uh, uh, you, you can go check it out. I've tweeted it out. It's my, um, you know, that challenge on Twitter on put a photo of yours that looks like an album cover. So I put it up and he converted it to an album cover complete with an iTunes fascia. So yeah, go check it out. It's awesome. <laughs> Next question, please. Crypto Gyan. How long you figure America's war fatigue will last? Will American people be ready for a major conflict in the next 10 years? Yes, yes, guaranteed, boss. Guaranteed. Within next 10 years, you will see a major military intervention. The military industrial complex is on a roll out there. So, you know, you're, you, you are definitely Can going you to turn see... Your, oh, yeah, okay. Yeah. You're back up. Okay. Can you hear me? Yeah, yeah, yeah. You, you were never audio off, but the video went off and came back. Oh, okay. So, uh, yeah. So, you know, it's 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 quite significant. You will see uh, a major intervention within the next 10 years. And, and most likely where? Impossible to predict. Truly impossible to predict. But you will see it. They will see. The thing is, when you now have a system that needs an external war. Mm. It's no longer just the military industrial complex. The more and more these Democrat woke politics destroy the American economy. I mean, the American economy is so burdened by debt right now. And you know, it's not just... Uh, they're uh, adding more to it. Like <laughs> they keep yeah. adding. And mind you, it's not just the consumption pattern, it's also the construction pattern. This whole thing of rural suburbia where you have urban sprawl, it is tax inefficient, it is infrastructure inefficient, it is transport inefficient, it is resource inefficient. Urban sprawl is a debt trap. Americans don't seem to get that. You need compact cities. There's a whole re rethinking of urban architecture that you need in America that is not happening. So there's lots of things adding up to it. So America is, there's no recovery from the debt trap. And the worse things get with wokeism, the more external adventures you'll need to hide your uh, uh, inadequacies. So true, so true, so true. Uh, Chaitanya YSK, is a police force of 4 million enough for India and a param paramilitary of 1 million along with a centralized police force of 600,000 for internal security and law and order issues? And does India's economy allow this? Meaning like, is there a tax base to support it? See, policy, like I keep telling you, is intersectional. Just doing one thing doesn't sort everything. There's lots of things you have to do. It's not just increasing the size of your police force. It's also increasing their training, investing in body cams and things like that, simplifying the language of the law, easing the burden on courts and things like that, etc., etc., etc. Forensic uh, internal audits of police officers to avoid conflicts of interest like Sachin Vaze and this uh, Parambir Singh and things like that. You know the entire Bombay police is in cahoots with the underworld out there. It's a cooperative policing system with the underworld. So, you know, there are lots of things you have to do. The thing is, when you ask, is can does India have the money to do it? Look at it in terms of opportunity cost. The cost of not doing it is far greater than the cost of doing it. The cost of doing it will see to it that there is a massive improvement in business, uh, uh, you know, normal commerce, etc, etc, etc. 
which is fantastic for the economy anyway. So look at it in terms of opportunity costing. Yes, we can do it. I think the police, you will, given the levels of rural violence you have, you need a ratio of about one cop for every three, four hundred people. Basically, that's how much you need for effective policing. And even there, you have to improve the human quality of the individual policeman. You have to reduce political interference. Right. But again, why does police interference come out? Because of sheer judicial capriciousness. Look at this uh, 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 chap, Aryan Khan. To date, he's been arrested. He's been jailed in, what, four or five days now. Now, I have zero sympathy for Shah Rukh Khan. I don't watch Hindi movies anyway. Uh, very, very rarely, maybe once or twice a year. At any rate, I will never go for Shah Rukh Khan movie because I don't like his acting. And most of the people seem to be after him because of any perceived role he played in some SSR, uh, uh, whatever it was, suicide, murder, God knows what. We even stopped following it. But other than the Chardon Friday, this chap was found with no drugs on himself. He wants to show the CCTV footage. The uh, NCB does not want to show the CCTV footage. They don't also want to show it in private to the judge. It's fine that in the video, other people can, uh, you know, uh, uh, see who, who they have incriminating stuff on and who they don't. But even that they don't want to. And they're keeping him in jail. When you have systems of justice like this, where bail is, they say bail is the norm, jail is the exception, rubbish. You need to have serious jurisprudence, boss. Police reforms goes with judicial reforms. So yes, you can do it. And once you do it, you will find that the internal security requirement will drop drastically. A lot of your internal security problems are precisely because your police is either non-existent or extraordinarily corrupt. One thought I had, Abhijit, is, see, people keep saying, how can you have so many people in the police force? How will they manage to fund it? You know, the way the way you make them to fund it is you make them to collect the fines for, uh, you know, people who are destroying public property or people who are indulging Look, in drugs. Look, even there, you're not going to get much by we. Uh, we did a cost-benefit analysis of it. It's classified. We did it for the home, I think it was the home ministry. Uh, you know, we were looking at fine collections and things like that. It mm -hmm. still won't be enough. The point is you look at it in terms of opportunity cost. Okay, the fines won't be enough, but it will pay for itself in the amount of crime, extortion, this thing it brings down. Because remember, when you say increasing the police force, like I said, you're looking at lots of things. Right now, right. judicial unpredictability is the highest thwarter of FDI coming into this country. Judicial unpredictability is the biggest barrier to business in this country. Judicial and regulatory uh, uh, unpredictability. So there are lots of things that go with it. Like I said, you implement it as a set of measures. Uh, the fines will not. In fact, the fines will come down drastically. If you see a policeman or if you're constantly watched by cameras, it comes down drastically. And you know the way speeding, speeding is very rare in China. Do you know why? Because instead of having speed traps and cameras every 100 kilometers or so, what they do in China is they see when are you getting onto the highway and when did you exit the highway. And it's a smart recognition system that looks at your car uh, uh, registration and it calculates how much, what was your average speed on the highway. So if you think you can get away with speeding in one stretch, you can't. They'll at most allow you to go five kilometers over if, if, if the speed limit was 60 kilometers and if they find that you have averaged 70 kilometers per hour, immediate fine and cancellation of license and things like that. There are lots of ways of doing this. We don't do it deliberately. Because the speedsters themselves are uh, connected politically. That's one of the biggest yeah. problems. Hey, listen, uh, last time we talked about this uh, riots, right? And you said that one side has a video, <coughs> one side does not have it. What do you make of all the arrests going on now? Do you think that uh, the BJP person's... Uh, Again, Mr. what does the video show? The, no, no, no. The video... The, is there any video evidence actually showing the minister's son at the spot? No. Uh, what the video shows is that they first started pelting and damaging the car. When the car moved into these guys, it was under attack. 
its front windscreen was cracked and its back windscreen was cracked. Mm. Zero visibility. Uh, your re massively reduced situational awareness. Plus, uh, you were under attack. You were trying to escape. You mow into them. The only person... Uh, uh, and you, how do you arrest everybody else in the convoy, boss? The only the jeep mowed into them. Everybody inside the jeep has been killed, and the driver especially was tortured and killed. There's a video doing the rounds. Right. So I don't even know under what grounds this. Even if he was there in the car, who is responsible for killing the driver? No. Who has been killed by the so-called protesters, parasites? Nice so this is like saying tomorrow, if a uh, 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 in nine eleven, uh, in addition to Muhammad Atta and the nineteen hijackers, you all all the people on board the planes were also terrorists, because they were also technically sitting in the plane when it uh, uh, hit the World Trade Center. Na? This is the joke that is the law in India, and mind you, all those parasite murderers who killed those four people in the car. They have not been arrested. There is no police action against them, even though that is the crime for which you have video evidence. Right. This is the joke of Indian police and Indian judiciary. What are you thinking, I think? Hmm? It's what not muddled thinking? thinking. It's criminal. It's criminal thinking. It's self-interest masquerading around as public service. So, is, is this Lakhimpur being used by the center to try and put Yogi Adityanath in a box? What are your thoughts? Because he seemed much more decisive, but lately he has been soft peddling. Look, Yogi, I have told you before, it's a whole <coughs> load of tamasha happening. The only chap who seems to understand institutions is uh, a former congressman uh, called Himanta Biswal Sarma in Assam. I have been flashing flashing warning signs about Yogi for a long time. Initially, I was a big Yogi fan, like I was a Modi fan. And then we saw how Modi turned out. You trust institutions and institution builders. You don't trust individuals. Trust institutions, not individuals. Yogi is not changing institutions. Himanta Biswal Sarma is changing institutions. Okay. So Yogi... He has behaved exactly the way I expected him to behave, which was to be a disappointment. Oh, well. Um... And let's be clear why he's being used. The only reason nobody made him chief minister, he made himself chief minister. The only reason Amit Shah and Modi are pandering to him is because the only person who can reduce the vote bank there is the Thakur leader out there, Rajnath Singh. They are propping up another Thakur to reduce the power of the old Thakur leader, Rajnath Singh. It's as clear as that. Next question, please. Vaibhav Chaudhary wants to know, can some de-radicalization policy similar to Xinjiang be used in Kashmir? You know, de-radicalization in Xinjiang, we don't even know if it's a success. The way it's gone, personally, I think it will not be a success. Okay. Uh, it, it it can't be a success. If somebody, for example, Vaibhav, uh, I'm suspecting you don't eat beef. If somebody no, throws don't. you in jail, makes you burn the Gita, the Vedas, everything, uh, make you burn images of your gods and smash uh, statues of your gods, forces you to eat beef, forces you to cut... Uh, uh, a cow, sacrifice a cow in front of you and then cook it and eat it. When you come out of jail, tell me, are you going to be uh, grateful to this person and feel that you are no longer a Hindu? Or are your Hindu feelings, are uh, would, would they have gotten a lot more militant and violent inside that jail? You tell me, you look within yourself and tell me, if you feel you will be de-radicalized by something like that, then sure. In my experience, it never has. Why about Chaudhary? Should India still militarily align itself with US when some of their elected representatives are trying to screw over time-tested allies like Israel and with the rise of wokeism there? Uh, no. There was a time to align with America that is now past. See, India is... 
this is a thing that an Israeli used for a Palestinian. Uh, it was I'm paraphrasing it to India. India never loses an opportunity to lose an opportunity. We had the opportunity to align with America through most of the early part of the of our independence, so 40s to early 50s. We didn't decide to go the Soviet way. God knows why. We just did. In the 70, 80, 90 years when we could have aligned with them, we did not. In even the 30-year window of opportunity where we had from 1991 when the Soviet Union collapsed to 2020 when the opportunity existed, we did not make any use of it. Today, if you align with America, it is like aligning with the USSR in 1989 or 1990. Vaibhav Chaudhary again. Your Highness, should we legalize marijuana in India? Can our country afford this 420 weed culture with a per capita income of $2,000? So look, what is a weed culture per se? Uh, you can legalize, you know, CBD is very different from marijuana. If you distill CBD, its uses are extremely different. Uh, in fact, you know, I've had uh, 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 a CBD oil uh, rubbed on my head, some kind of CBD lotion. I was getting a splitting headache. It was amazing the way it sorted out. You don't even get a high. It's very critical for pain relief for a lot of people, for joint aches, people with acute arthritis and things like that. You can do CBD, which is an extract from it. If you, you, you've uh, taken away a lot of the compounds, as I understand it. I'm, I'm, not a, I'm not great at chemistry, but this is the way it was explained to me by somebody who runs a CBD business. Uh, weed legalization. First, there is a case that you make of a difference between soft drugs and hard drugs. Now, whether you've legalized it or not, I can tell you weed and hash are the easiest things to acquire in Delhi, Bombay, anywhere yeah you start growing uh, going to dharamshala you can see weed growing right out there you don't even need to do anything god knows who's peed or shat on it on the roadside but if you wash it you can use it i mean if you know what you're looking for it's very easy to find it even in a city like um, you know i know a certain uh, government maintained public garden where i found weed in delhi in the center of delhi in latian's delhi right so, uh, the, the, first of all, understand we have not de uh, illegalized weed in any practical sense. There's the police enforcement deficit issue here. Second, you know, if you go by the Dutch experiment at legalization, there was a difference between hard drugs and soft drugs, but now even the crimes associated with soft drugs are rising. So there is a case to be made that the Dutch experiment has failed. In which case you just stick to CBD and medically prescribed CBD. Will it be abused? Of course it will be abused. But right now, where is your restriction on hash and marijuana? It's still extremely easily available all across. Next question, please. Chaitanya Vyas Kairyan, Abhijit, should India have a 4 million strong armed forces? No, we already asked this question. No, no, no. One second. Not armed forces. Hello. You need to reduce oh, the size sorry, of your sorry, armed sorry. forces. This was right, th right. this question was asked with police. police. I don't know you're why right, right, right. everybody is asking the same question with the same numbers. They've just uh, replaced with this thing. The question we right. asked was police. You should have a 300 to 400 person is to one police officer ratio. And you need to have a much smaller military. In fact, 1.2 million that we have right now is too much. It doesn't allow for modernization and capital investment or human investment. Remember, a soldier is only as good as the training you put into him and invest in him, incentivize him, pay him and things like that, given the ability to take decisions by himself or herself. So you actually need to reduce the size of your military. You need to be more capital intensive and with humans, you need to invest a lot more in individual human beings. So you need smaller size. <coughs> Police, you need to expand and you need to invest more in them. Over time, you can reduce. Okay. And with uh, 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 your internal paramilitary forces, what you will see is once your police reforms happen, combined with the judicial reforms we spoke about, the need for internal security will start coming down. 
Next question, please. Partha Mukherjee, what would you say about the leftists in Bengal? Recently, in three assembly elections, they lost their deposits. So I have only three words for them. Ha, ha, ha. It's the pattern all over. What more can you say? So, you know, the thing is, Modi has moved so far left. So if this is the spectrum, this is the center, this was left, this was right. Okay. Now, Modi has moved it so far that the left only has this much left. Out of Even out of this, if you expand this particular part to this, out of that, the Congress has taken from, if this is the th left, the far left, the Congress has taken over from here to here, which means only this much is left, you know, about this much is left for the left itself. They're completely squeezed out. There's nothing you can do. Uh, you know, Bill Clinton did the opposite. He was a Democrat and he moved so far right that he was actually squeezing out the Republicans. He was. And that was a smart thing to do. Unfortunately, what happened was Al Gore played too far to the left. In fact, he writes in his own memoir that he told Al Gore when Al Gore was campaigning, your boss, you're moving too far to the left. Don't do this. And Al Gore right. didn't listen. Right. And well, we all know what happened then. <laughs> Next question, please. Purit Adhikari wants to know, is and will Pakistan and left-wing politics in India used as counterweight to India by Anglo-centric liberals to keep Indian businesses in check from competing and from India to be militarily dominant? Look, boss, the only people holding back India is Indians, including your current government. Okay, first look within yourself. What is preventing massive privatization? You, you first, you know, it was, uh, uh, oh, let us first get an absolute majority. Then it turned out 282 was not enough. You wanted 303. Even at 303, you have not been able to do half the things. What are you complaining about, boss? Who told you, uh, is anyone preventing you? Is a parliamentary majority preventing you from cracking down on farmers? No. Was it preventing you from cracking down on Shaheen Bag? No. Why didn't you crack down? Look within yourself. Stop blaming other people. Stop seeing this foreign hand. Next question. Looks like that was the last question we had. Boy, that's really? amazing. We are going to wrap up fast. Just give me one second. Let me double check. Yeah, so a couple of people are looking forward to seeing you eat your own shirt which is very interesting. And, oh, this is a good one. Nebuchad Nizar wants to know, what is your view on the recent Nobel Prize winners? Oh, there you are. And this is in Chennai Mahabalipuram, recommend, food recommendations. Which one, Nobel Prize or food recommendations? Okay, you go with what's on the screen and then we can go to the question I asked. Okay, so, uh, uh, okay. So in Chennai, uh, there is a... Um, branch from Madurai. Uh, what I want you to do is go check out this YouTube channel called Irfan's View. He recommends all these little holes in the wall and holes in the wall are very good. But if you want something slightly posh for typical uh, South Indian non-vegetarian food, then go to Anjapar. Anjapar is the place you have to go, not Ponusamis. People will tell you to go to Anusam Ponusamis. Don't. Go to Anjapar. There are many things around. You can go there and they do very, very good food. You must try the local parathas, which are very different from North Indian paratha, kurma, as we call it. All the non-veg food there is fantastic, but the vegetarian is also very good out there. So check that out. Uh, in Mahabalipuram, again, never go for the big restaurants in Mahabalipuram. What you do is you'll see a lot of these little holes in the wall just where, just before the road branches, where one side is going off to Pondicherry and one side is going into... Uh, 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 to see the short temple and things before that and even after that you'll come across a lot of these literally these small small canteen kinds of things on your left and right just stop there and eat any one of them they're all good without exception in Mahabalipuram surprisingly. Pondicherry there is a heritage hotel I forget it's La Maison uh, it's yeah, called yeah. Maison du something it's it's like a old Pondicherry inner courtyard home that's been revived and things like that 
and it's fantastic. You should go there. Uh, I've forgotten the name now. I can't just recollect it from the top of my head, but La Maison do something. Just just check. It's it's uh, it's not on the beachfront. It's inside. It's an old restored home. Pretty expensive hotel, but fantastic. Fantastic food. We had the vegetarian thali out there. I've never had a better vegetarian thali anywhere. Non-veg is also very good, but try the vegetarian thali there. It's worth it. Next question, please. Chaitanya YSK. How much money will it take? Oh, to I can't hear you. Yeah. Let me just... Uh, do you mind if I rejoin? I'll just rejoin. Yes, yes. Please, please go ahead. Please go ahead. Viewers, uh, here's a request to please like the show as well as to join us. Uh, for our membership as well as uh, subscribe to our channel and it would help us greatly if you could do so right around now and um, we all know that the more people like a certain program um, the more chance it has of going viral so as Abhijit is a one of those it is our flagship product for big gurus and uh, we really seek your help in trying to make this thing reach as wide an audience as possible and uh, as we speak abhijit is trying to rejoin he's having some technical difficulties but uh, he should be joining us very very shortly um they, there are a couple of interesting things coming down this week one is that we will be having our discussion tomorrow with elmer yuan on this incident that happened in uh, the china sea a nuclear submarine hit something very hard on the ocean floor, it has hurt a lot of sailors, and it is it is believed that whatever the object that it hit is of a nuclear origin. So we'll we'll keep you posted on that. Back to Abhijit. Next question, please. Can you hear me, Abhijit? Yeah. Yep. Okay, I'm back. Great. So Chaitanya YSK again. How much money will it take to integrate Indian weapon systems? Mm -hmm. It's not a question of how much money. It's a question of if those vendors will even give you permission to integrate them. Okay, so there's a whole set of things. You, so, you know, every new weapon system we purchase without thinking about integration, we're making the cost of that integration worse and worse and worse. Anyway, there's nothing we can do about it now. It's, it's so not even worth discussing that, the cost. Are you saying that India signs agreements like non-exclusives, meaning like, they will sign saying that we will not try to reverse engineer your product or something like that? Yeah, yeah. I mean, if you tried reverse engineering, if you opened certain things out, they would you'd attract very harsh sanctions and would apply across the entire spectrum. So if you say, for example, try to reverse engineer a Mirage 2000, they would mm -hmm. cut off supplies for the Rafale, for the Jaguars, for everything. If you try to reverse engineer a Hercules, They'll cut off your supply for the C-17 across. You're not just Lockheed Martin, Boeing, everyone will. Uh, mm -hmm. For your Poseidons, for your Harpoon missiles, everything. Wow. <laughs> no, Plus, is a... You've signed. You've signed saying that you won't. And you will, uh, you know, there are certain things you can't. The belief is you can just reverse engineer anything you can't. See, there are two parts to engineering, the how and the why. It's engineering is no longer about just the schematics and getting the design. It's also the material fabrication and things like that because you're walking into the realm of advanced materials. Right. Nebuchad Nazar again. What are your views on the recent Nobel Prize winners? Well, I haven't read the literature prize winner, physics, chemistry, anyway, I don't, medicine, I don't understand. Uh, all that well, unless it's explained to me. Uh, with the Peace uh, Prize, you know, uh, Novaya Gazeta has been, and Maria Ressa, they're the Indian, they're the Philippine and Russian equivalent of the wire and uh, scroll and caravan, I guess. Though they tend to be a lot more factual than, say, caravan uh, would. So, uh, I'm just glad that Rana you didn't get it because honestly, if this year Maria Ressa got it, though Maria Ressa has never fabricated unlike Rana Ayub. I, I think they would have looked at Rana Ayub and instead settled for Maria Ressa because they couldn't, <laughs> unlike the New York Times, they wouldn't have been able to sustain the capacity for a Pinocchio-like long nose and fabrication. 
It would be an irony, isn't it, if someone like Rana you were to get a Nobel Peace Prize or Nobel Literature Prize? So a lot of my editor friends tell me she's on route to it. At some point, she will get it. <sighs> Becomes a laughing stock. Mandar Karnik, what are the kinds of na- kinds and nature of institutions that India needs to build? Look, you have the rubric of all the institutions. You need a more transparent and responsive judiciary. You need a bigger and more responsive police. You need economic planners who have actually studied economics. Not bloody babus who have passed a general uh, service entrance exam. You Are need you trying a- to imply something about the RBI chairman, RBI governor, who's a history major? You- yeah, you, you you think? And not to mention a finance secretary who had a PhD in Ayurveda or something like that. Yeah, yeah, yeah. 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 Uh, so, right. gee, did I say that? I never mentioned a name. I just mentioned that there was a finance secretary no, it's, it's with a PhD. Yeah, you know. okay. All right. Right. Go ahead. So, so enjoy yourselves. Um, but those are the institutions you build. I think the only two additional institutions I would build would be an Indian Institute of Statistics, whose job it is to collate micro data from the ground every single day of the year, year on year on year on year, because data, uh, data free policy making is the norm. The second is an institutional rule that every government has to put out uh, every time a policy is enacted, a white paper has to be put out saying these are the expected measures, these are the first order effects, these are the second order, anticipated first order effects, anticipated second order effects, anticipated third order effects. What are the failure standards? And in case A, B, C fails, who will be held responsible and asked to leave? Right. That's number two. Number three would be a policy coordination division which starts looking at all policies together from all the ministries and seeing which one impacts the other, how and why. Yeah. Next question, please. We have a few more questions and then we can wrap it up. Next question, please. Okay, I'm going to read it from my notes here. Gargi Kaul Raina wants to know, living inside and outside India, I wonder how much it remains territorially, how it remains territorially united despite 75 years of wars, insurgencies and communal strife. Your opinion? So there's a story about this, you know. It was apparently Lee Kuan Yew traveling with Indira Gandhi. And he, uh, when he lifted up the paper in the car while he was being driven from the airport to the prime minister's house, he was like, look at how many riots and things you've had. Like I've gone through your newspapers and today alone there have been about 12, 13 incidents. How do you not have a big flare up and how does your country stay together? And you know what Indira Gandhi said? She apparently, this is anecdotal, she said apparently that we allow a lot of small explosions to happen every now and then so that we don't have one big explosion. Wow. Next question, Ameya Garut. How can lawyers, advocates contribute to national GDP? How will Rafael travel to Shanghai, as you always say? over Vietnam or from South China Sea or from the Northeast? Good. How can lawyers and advocates contribute to national GDP? Well, you can keep demanding instead of, you know, licking judges ass in order to get to be senior counsel or whatever. You can say, fuck all my senior thing, fuck my chamber and this and that chamber privileges and all of that. Uh, 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 Give me uh, uh, judicial accountability. No more of this uh, uh, you know, collegium system, end the collegian system. Uh, that's what you do. Are you willing to do that? Because mind you, if you do that, you will never make senior advocate or senior counsel or whatever it is uh, uh, that, you know, is in the gift of these judges to give away. How will Rafal travel to Shanghai? It does not travel to Shanghai. It travels about 1,900 odd kilometers away from Shanghai over the Himalayas direct route because unlike civilian airliners, they don't have to plan for diversion. So if you take the civilian flight, the Air China flight from Delhi to Beijing or the Air India flight from Shanghai to Mumbai, well, that one I haven't taken. But if you go the Delhi flight, you'd think it's a direct flight from Delhi to Beijing, right? You just fly up north, uh, northeast. 
No, you actually trail the Himalayas south because uh, you know your flight distance is too low compared to the Himalayas for you to be flying over it safely. So you come all the way up to Burma, and it's only after you cross over the Arakans into Burma, which are low enough, that you then take the northern direction, uh, northward direction, and go north. With the Rafale, it flies much higher, so it doesn't have these problems. It doesn't have to have a, a spare base to divert to when, uh, you know, twin engine operations require you to divert to and things like that. Can you please keep the question up on the screen? Uh, because there's third part to it yeah, as well. Yeah, yeah thanks. Yeah. Uh, so, yeah, so it will fly uh, directly. And uh, if you have your cruise missiles and things with you, you're either your nearby or if you're getting the French, uh, uh, the... Uh, Scalp Naval turned into a uh, air-launched missile. It's got a very long range, apparently 2,000 odd kilometers. You can, uh, like I said, you don't reach Shanghai, but you get close enough to lob a few things at Shanghai. Next question is from Gargi Rana. How do you view the Apni party in JNK? A massive improvement over North, uh, NC, National Conference and PDP or not? They seem more realistic about JNK's future and India. Future with India. I, I haven't really read much about them to have an opinion, but I will ask me the same question next week and I'll answer you. Wonderful. Wonderful. Next question, please. That's it. Let me see here. That's it. Uh, well, yeah, there's inconsequential questions. This is the last question here. Ashutosh Kumar wants to know what what other government-owned sectors slash companies do you think should be disinvested and privatized first? Can sale be an option? There is no business that the government <coughs> should be in. You need to be privatizing everything. This joke of transferring the ordinance factory board into seven PSUs, it should have just been privatized. Taxpayer money is not our employment benefit. Everything needs to be privatized. The government needs to be out of business. The government needs to be spending on core things like data collection, security, internal, external security, <laughs> education, and things like that. Um, uh, what What is the English translation of Dandasora? <laughs> Freeloaders. So I'll, I'll, I'll say this in Tamil, and you can translate this into English. Dandasora ngalke varapon kurutkarthukku government kadayadu. The government is not there for feeding the freeloaders. Feeding bananas to freeloaders, huh? Yeah. Okay. Yes. How would you solve, Gargi Rana again? How would you solve the stray dogs problem in Delhi? Since my childhood, there have been a menace and rabies is universally fatal. Yes, very good question. Uh, they can be a menace. Uh, they get aggressive for a whole set of reasons. The primary one of which is, uh, you know, a lack of food. Uh, or when they are fed, it's territoriality. So what you have to do is you have to start sterilizing them. And the problem in Delhi is nobody wants to sterilize either their cats or their dogs because they're like, oh, very bad. We'll keep feeding you, but we won't sterilize you. A, a sterilized dog is fundamentally a less aggressive dog, especially in females. The pack mentality goes. Okay, so there's lots of things you can do. You can have government land, uh, allocate 100 acres outside the city, sterilize them and take them out. Over a period of time, because of sterilization, the numbers will fall. You insist that all dogs uh, that are sold have to have their DNAs printed and uh, be microchipped and things like that. So when people abandon dogs or just allow their dogs to go out on the roads and start procreating and things like that, when they don't uh, uh, sterilize their dogs and things like that, which adds to the problem on the street, there will be consequences. There's a lot of things you can do. All right, relocation being one more of them. And in particularly, uh, so there are rabid dogs out there who have to be put down. But otherwise, it's a very easily solvable problem where there is no civic sense or knowledge to solve it. It's like the parking problem. You know, people buy their houses. They don't buy the area in front of their house. And yet everybody thinks that the area in front of their house, even if it doesn't have their gate, is their exclusive parking. You can't park out there. This parking is reserved. They literally grab public land, either to grow plants, have a hedged-in garden uh, in few cases, but mostly for parking. 
that land your house belongs to you even one square inch outside your house does not belong to you you can't just cordon it off and say uh, this thing so it's the same thing it's a lack of civic will and things to do anything about it well um this is the really last 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 question i think i want to stop here crypto gyan i saw a tech talk on ai based governance actual participatory democracy to artificial intelligence avatar if western nations start using uh, ai artificial intelligence in helping judiciary and governments can india also adapt look uh, i'm very much against uh, ai in governments and i'll tell you why uh, in terms of participatory democracy because it is participatory democracy that has led to wokeness the democratization of discourse and it was participatory democracy that athens led to poisoning socrates there is a reason we have republics republic you choose elected representatives to do things for you okay in case of the judiciary there's a very very good case for replacing the judiciary with ai especially given the joke that the judiciary in this country is okay i think it is one of the prime targets we should have for replacing with artificial intelligence if certain criteria are met in governance in terms of selecting government contracts in terms of detecting corruption patterns of corruption based on big data algorithms and things you do need to use ai but that's about it yes can it be useful very useful but remember the thing about ai is it's based on what data you input if your data collection is going to be as pathetic as it is today where most of your gov uh, government decisions are feelings based and not any deep in depth research base then you're going to get bad ai in fact your ai could be worse than your judges at the moment garbage in garbage out is what you're saying and mm -hmm. uh, uh, pending questions will be asked next week thanks for joining abhijit and we apologize for the technical difficulties we had right in the middle for some time but i think i'm sure we are going to have all these things worked out thank you very much abhijit and once again apologies for starting a little bit late we will be back on our regular schedule next monday at 9 pm namaskar we will wait we will